Just wrong. Every time you go into a used game store, you know, one that actually has Super Nintendo cartridges, you're always going to find the same set of games no matter where you go. You're going to see crap like Balls 3D, you're going to see Mario is Missing, you'll probably see Rival Turf, I'm sure, and you'll definitely see like two dozen sports games. Always sports games, that's a guarantee. Why is that? Well, sports games have a short shelf life by nature. From year to year, players switch teams, making the rosters outdated. As a Minnesota Vikings fan, there was nothing more annoying to me as a kid than playing as the 1994 roster in, like, 1997. More than half these guys aren't even on the team anymore at this point. Come on, Warren Moon? Terry Allen? Screw these guys, I want to play as Randy Moss and Randall Cunningham. Sports games also got incrementally better from year to year by adding more and more features. They went from generic made-up teams to real teams to real players to full season stats. So most of the time, the older sports games simply just got left behind the same way cassettes and VHS tapes did. Anyway, the only real way for a sports game to stay relevant is to, uh, well, you know, actually be a good game on its own. Imagine that. And by good, I mean it's got to appeal in some way to people that don't give a crap about the sport. I think good examples of this are games like NHL 94, Tecmo Super Bowl, and Ken Griffey Jr. Presents Major League Baseball. Hey, we finally got to the game after that long-ass preamble, but anyway. Even if you don't give a crap about baseball, this game still is a blast to play. It's a perfect example of cartoony realism. The players look like cartoons with their over-muscled physiques, which actually fits the era in which this game came out, you know, with the steroids and all that kind of stuff, but the physics behind the game itself is realistic. Hitting is all timing, there's no targeting a pitch or anything like that. Pitching is very straightforward as well. I really like all the different batting stances and pitching motions. Dennis Eckersley's in particular is badass. Plus you gotta love when you strike a guy out, he snaps his bat over his knee like a twig. And sometimes a dude will actually yell at you. What dude? You swung and missed, don't, don't yell at me, asshole. Or sometimes he just kinda sighs, totally defeated, and sulks back to the dugout to go listen to some Morrissey or something. Whatever, dude. The game is paced really well. You can get a 9 inning game completed in less than 20 minutes. And it's got a season mode that lets you play through all 163 games if you want to, and it keeps stats along the way. Or you can just skip right to the playoffs. There's also a home run derby, which is fun, but really flawed if you're playing the one player mode. Because you have to sit there and watch the computer go first, which takes forever. Whose idea was this? Also, I love the names they came up with some of the participants. You gotta love Can O'Corn and Nick Nohart. Speaking of names, the game has a Major League Baseball license, so it's got real teams and real stadiums. But one odd quirk is that while real players are included, as in their likenesses, but their names aren't. For example, this is clearly Kirby Puckett, and this is clearly Kent Herbeck, right down to their stats from 1993 and their batting stances. But Nintendo, for whatever reason, was unable to get a license from the MLBPA to use real names. The only real name used in the game is, of course, Ken Griffey Jr. They could use their likenesses, though, for some reason, but not their names. The game does let you change all the names, so it doesn't even matter anyway. And yes, when I was 12 years old, you better believe I sat in front of a pile of newspapers looking up every single player from box scores and changing their fake name to the correct one. It took me for like four hours, but damn it, it was worth it. I was 12, what the hell else was I gonna do? Or you could be like my friend from junior high who changed all the names on one team to male porn stars. When I asked how he knew the names of 20 different male porn stars, he did not have an answer for me. Also, it is worth noting that some of these fake names aren't just any fake names. For example, the Cincinnati Reds consist of authors like Bram Stoker and Philip K. Dick. The Milwaukee Brewers have Peter Parker, Bruce Wayne, and Clark Kent. It's pretty amusing. I have a link in the description that has more information in case you were ever curious about some of these guys. Anyway, this game is the best baseball game on the Super Nintendo because of the colorful artwork, the personality, and the pacing of the game. Stuff moves right along, it's never dull for too long. It's totally worth picking up today, I think, because of, like I said, the cartoon-like realism. The game has a lot of personality, and you just don't see much of that in modern baseball games. Sadly, they dropped the cartoon aspect in the sequel, Ken Griffey Jr.'s winning run and the game just feels totally flat and dull as a result. I think they're going for more of a realistic approach, but it's just its just not working. The colors aren't as bright, everything looks kind of lifeless, and listen to this music. Why so serious? It's a freaking baseball game. Anyway, yeah, if you're looking for a one baseball game for the Super Nintendo that's worth playing today, it's Griffey MLB. He's out.